Hey everyone, not that long ago, I helped introduce Fender Studio, but there's been some follow-up on it, especially from your guys' comments, and I love making videos based on what you guys need. So now, here's how to record in Fender Studio. Let's dive into the DAW. So today we're gonna be working on the computer version of Fender Studio, but all of the steps and processes that we do are gonna carry over to the mobile version as well. When you launch Fender Studio for the first time, you may have to sign in or register for an account. I've already done that. You'll have to do that on your end if you want to. If you don't, you'll have reduced items within your sessions, but that's like different amps and some plugins that you can always just register later and unlock all that stuff. So in this video, we're gonna assume that you've never done any recording ever. So we're gonna do a little bit of the baby steps, but also there are some things that we're gonna kind of jump over because there might be a little bit more advanced. Maybe you already have things hooked up, stuff like that. For example, the record button right here on the main page, this puts you right into a session and you can instantly start recording this way. But if you've never set anything up or you don't even have your interface hooked up, don't go with this one, just go with new. And that's what we're gonna be doing today. When you just open up Fender Studio, this is what it's gonna look like. If you have older sessions that you've worked on, you can open. If you wanna use one of the pre-supplied jam tracks, you can do that here. We're gonna skip over the record button. This is like an instant dive in. I've got the idea, everything's hooked up. I've done this before. You can instantly start recording with this one, but we're gonna go with building the baby steps and the foundation first. So we're gonna go with new. When you hit new, it instantly brings you right into a session asking you what kind of track you wanna add. Depending on what you're trying to do, you'll need to change this to whatever you need to do. So today I'm gonna to show you how to import some files and then how to record on top of them. And that's the order we'll go in. So I'm gonna start with other and I'm gonna ignore the presets. I'm gonna, I will name it because I do have some drum loop files that are available to me. I'm gonna pull those in, I'm gonna change my color, and I'm gonna ignore input because I'm not actually recording this. So I'm gonna add in a new track. I've done all of my steps to get it ready, and I'm gonna hit okay. Instantly you can see we have a new track. It's labeled as drums, it's got that same symbol. If we double click, we can make some other adjustments here, like one thing that is just on my system. It gets real funky if I try to change the symbol before the fact. That's literally only my system. Don't worry, yours is probably different. So I'm gonna change this to drums. Now I'm gonna import a file, and there's multiple ways you can do this. You can come up to the application menu, the hamburger menu, whatever you wanna call this over here, and you can import file. Shift Command O on a Mac. Uh, it's probably gonna be Shift Control O on a PC. I'm just gonna click on it now. And I've already navigated on my system to where I have my drum loops. And I'm importing wave files. Right now, with Fender Studio, the way it currently is, import waves. I don't believe you can import MP3s because there have been some comments saying that they have been having problems. So let's just convert everything to wave. That's pretty standard and uniform across the board. So let's just pull in a drum loop. And here we go. Now I'm gonna hit spacebar and let's make sure this is working. Okay, we've got drums in here. And if I wanna just have this be the same drums over and over again, I can hit D on my keyboard for duplicate and it just does exactly that. It takes an exact copy and just puts it right after the last one. So now I've got 32 bars of my Boots and Cats loop. Now I wanna add something on top of this. I wanna add guitar, cause we're working in Fender Studio. I can hit the plus button over here and add in my track and that's what we'll do this time. And we'll say it is a guitar. Let's go with some kind of preset. Sure, why not? Let's just go with clarity. We're gonna call this guitar one. And I am going to check that my input is the input that I need from my interface to record. This will be different for you because it is different based on the interface you have, and I don't know what you have right now. So it'll look for your interface and you can change the input based on your settings. Once we have everything set, we hit okay, and now I have a new guitar track. Now I'm gonna plug in. Okay, I've got my guitar, I've got it plugged in. Let me just change which input I'm in. You'll have to do this like we were just saying. Now, I'm not getting anything. Well, it's because I don't have my track record enabled. 
Now I can see there's a little blue indicator right here. It's teeny tiny, but if I start doing anything to make noise on my guitar, we're getting response. The track can see that we're getting input signal. Now we have to set our input levels. That's when you just have whoever start playing and you get as much signal as you can without clipping. Input clipping bad, output clipping maybe okay. That's a different video. Check out some of the ones down in the description or in the top right corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust my signal now and get something like that. That seems pretty healthy. I'm checking my inputs. I'm not clipping anything. I think we're gonna be okay. Now, if I wanna hear something, I have to hit this little monitor button here. So sure, we heard our drums already, but we weren't recording that. We wanna monitor our inputs and now, I can hear this coming out through my system. If you've got headphones, they come out through your headphones or however your setup is. Now that everything is hooked up and I verified that I have signal, I can hit the comma button on my keyboard. This is also the left bracket. This will bring me back to the beginning and I can start recording. What I can do from here is come down to the bottom and hit record. It will give me a four count in at my BPM, which is currently the default of 120, but we can change this and it will shift our audio file around. Watch this. If I change this to, let's say, 110, now our session is longer, our drums have been stretched, and they're locked into tempo. Take a listen. Okay, we've got an idea of our tempo. Now let's start laying something down. Again, hit the left bracket, come down to the record button. We'll get a four count in, and then we can start playing. Today, I'm just gonna go with some chords. Let's see what we come up with. So there, we've recorded one guitar. Maybe you wanna layer things on and you wanna have a different guitar or a different sound or even just a completely different part or instrument. Let's switch over to bass and we can start layering. That's the glorious thing about multi-track recording. Let's make a bass track following the same steps. This time, we'll use the letter T on our keyboard to instantly open up our add track dialog. We're gonna say that this is bass. I know that this is coming in number two on my end. You'll be using whatever it is on yours. Let's make it nice and pink and purple. Let's go with a preset, cause why not? Bass, bass. And now I need to switch instruments while this loads the track. When you're switching instruments, make sure you're out of record, cause then you won't hear the pop. Okay, I've changed everything over, made sure I'm in tune. These are the preset settings. I'm fine with it for now because I'm just trying to get the idea out. This may or may not be the final version of this, but I just need this demo. So we've got everything set up. We're still monitoring. Let's add in our bass. Cool, we're adding things in. Maybe you've got an idea for a melody as well. You can go in and add your vocal tracks as well by doing the same exact thing. And you can even pull open any preset. Let's just go with room one. Things might get real weird here. And then let's see what happens. Oh, that is really interesting. Okay, so I've added in a vocal track, and that's actually what you're listening to now. Uh, I've routed all of my audio for my microphone through Fender Studio, and that's what you're listening to right now. So it might be slightly delayed for you guys. I'll find out in the edit. It's totally fine. So with some of these presets, we have some options in here, including voice effects. And right now we're looking at transformer, but we also have the detuner, the ring mod and the vocoder. These have different styles and effects that they can do if we turn it on. Uh, currently we're not really doing anything, but as I increase this, you can hear I'm getting more and more reverb. There's a lot of things going on. This is transformer. There you go. So that was with me just kind of blending that in a little. There's also some preset compression and EQ settings. I don't like these, especially for me, but it's a starting point, which is awesome. 
some of the other effects. The detuner sounds a little bit like this. So now I can talk to you guys in my natural voice because this is exactly what I sound like in real life. So that's a really cool detuner built in. Ring modulator, you have to dial in some settings. So we're just going to kind of randomize these. And now you can hear how weird this thing is getting. Maybe we'll slow it down so it's real slow. And we'll go like that. And you can now hear it doing what it does if I just, ah, uh, okay. And of course, vocoder, let's just kind of bring this up to somewhere. And we have different types, noise, sawtooth, and uh, rectifier. That's what rect is. So let's start bringing this up. This is vocoder in rect, vocoder in sawtooth, and vocoder in noise. So if we transfer this all the way up, it's a little hard to understand. We can always just change our frequency, maybe make this a little bit more intelligible. There are your effects. Transformer was kind of nice though. I'm gonna use that and make it a little bit wider and maybe we'll go with something like this. A little wide, rolled off some of the lows, but nice atmosphere. So today I'm not actually going to record any vocals, but this is exactly how you would do it. And I'm not going to record any today because I didn't prep any. I've got nothing in my head. I don't have a melody. I'll have to figure that all later. But this is the same steps for recording guitars or recording bass. You can record your vocals as well. If you're using this on a mobile device, you'll have to make sure that you're using an interface that connects to your mobile device that can then also supply power for your microphone or you can use a USB-C style microphone or whatever connection will work for your microphone to your device. Most devices these days are USB-C. So that is totally fine. If you're looking for recommendations, uh, the top right corner and down in the description will be a link to one that we've reviewed on the channel before. We're actually going to be working with them again in the near future. So take a look out for that video. But that's most of what you need to do to get started recording in Fender Studio. That is just to get you going. This is not how to mix. This is not how to make a brilliant song. You have to make the brilliant song. And if you're looking for mixing tips, I can help you with that. You can subscribe to the channel, which would be huge, or you can reach out to me directly on Discord, and I can either guide you that way, or we can talk about how you can hire me to mix your project. Okay, now you're done writing your demo or your brilliant song, whatever the situation may be, and you need to get it out of Fender Studio. Easy. Top right hamburger menu, you have a couple options. If you want to be able to work on this more in a different DAW, like Studio One, for example, you can go to Export Session, you can give it a name, tell it where to go, export an audio mix down. That's really what we're looking for, but we'll get to that in a moment. So, we're going to put this as a DAW project. This is a different kind of project file you can open in a different DAW and everything will follow through. Your positions, your recordings, the sounds, all of it will travel if you export a DAW project to then open somewhere else. But I want to share this with my bandmates, with my publisher, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to go ahead and export this. I'm not going to do it as a loop. You could totally do that if you wanted to make your own backing tracks. But I'm just going to do export all, put it as a WAV file. But you could do it as a FLAC, which is another lossless audio style format. Uh, we're going to stick with WAV. It's universal. And then underneath that, you can change your resolution uh, with your bit depth if you need to adjust that, or your sample rate if you need to adjust that at all. Um, if you're working in a lower sample rate, don't try to export at a higher sample rate. It's not really adding much because it was originally captured at 48 or whatever your session was. But you can always go down. That is getting started with recording in Fender Studio. Now, we didn't go over everything. We probably kind of jumped over a few things. If you have more questions, please let me know down in the comments or join the Discord. We can have an active discussion over there where the community can help each other and we can all raise each other up and help advance our own recordings and our music careers. Until next time, thanks for watching. Happy mixing and happy recording. See you soon.